Now the instrumentation that we're going to be looking at, as you can see, is mounted right on the end of this horizontal vessel. And both of these items are temperature indicators. The bottom one happens to be a locally mounted temperature indicator. And as you can see, it has a dial, it has a leader or an arrow to point toward the temperature. And this temperature happens to be, oh, about 108 degrees. It has a long probe that is inserted into the vessel and allows the temperature to give a, a manual reading here. The one on the top is a panel mounted or a board mounted instrument. It too has a long probe that is inserted into the vessel. But what it is doing is sending a signal via the cable to a transmitter and the transmitter is in turn sending a signal to the control room or to the control panel. This allows the operator to again look at the temperature of the vessel from the building or from an off-site location so that they don't have to walk out and make a visual inspection. So it's important that we know a little bit about instruments and be able to understand that they're going to convey information to us that is important to the operation of the facility. Let's now look at how we're going to be able to represent the horizontal vessel on a drawing. As we can see here, we have a plan view, which is our top view, and this is typically shown on the arrangement drawings. We can see the vessel obviously has its length and it has its diameter. We can see the two heads on the end, and we can also see the cradles or the saddles represented as hidden lines. Now the other views that we have, the side view or the elevational view, would be used whenever we are representing the horizontal vessel on an elevation drawing, trying to show height of the vessel. Once again, we can see the saddles or the cradles on the ends. We can see the two heads and we see other nozzles and the manhole opening that we'll discuss a little bit later on. Also, we have the end view or the end elevation and that is important to us because we need to understand this symbol actually all three symbols and how they relate to the rendering of the horizontal vessel on a drawing. Now the next component we're going to talk about is the vertical vessel and like the horizontal vessel A flow diagram is a schematic drawing that is designed to show the layout of the facility. It's going to show the equipment, it's going to show piping, it's going to show valving, instrumentation, and things that are used to lay out the unit. Now as we think about a flow diagram, we have to realize that it is a schematic, meaning that it is not drawn to scale. The intention of a flow diagram is to show proportion, but not exact lengths of pipe and so forth. As we begin to look at our sample drawing, what I want to do is give you a little idea of what a flow diagram actually is by relating it to a topic that you may all be familiar with. And that's going to be making some iced tea. On our sheet right here, what we're going to do is first begin by bringing in a feed. And in this case, our feed is simply going to be water. Our water is obviously going to be coming out of the faucet at your sink. So somewhere along the way, the city is going to be pumping water to your house. And here's a symbol for a pump. From that pump, we're going to have to control the water coming into your house. And that is going to be done at the sink. And we're going to represent that by a valve. The next thing we're going to do is to put our water into some type of a storage device. And in this case, it's going to be a pot. So we're just going to go ahead and represent the pot that you might place on your stove with a box in this way. And throughout piping facilities, instrumentation is used to regulate and control the process. And the way we can do that on our pot is to put on a level gauge. A level gauge wants, uh, is to make sure that we do not obviously overflow the pot. The next thing we want to do is to mix in some tea. And to do that, we're going to have a mixer symbol shown in here. Now our mixer is simply where we'll be able to add the tea that we're going to be boiling. We also want to indicate our direction of flow, so we have a flow arrow. As we go into our A couple of other items that we want to look at now as far as specifications are concerned is how they actually relate to the drawing and then the construction of the facility. And let's look at our right column here back on our example. 
We're now talking about clearances and accessibility. Now, let me point out that there are many, many different sections of a piping specification, and this just happens to be two of them, six and seven, so they are very specific in the areas that they address. And let's show you how this one right here happens to be uh, being used. First off, we'll notice that we have minimum headroom clearances being established over roadways. We also have widths of secondary roadways. We have heights of the walkway. We have the width of a walkway. We go on down to platforms and address many, many different areas. And let's just show you how these are being used here. As we can see, let's look down here on the bottom and, um, well, let's just look at the horizontal clearance. In this case, we have to have horizontal clearance for a worker to have access. The other underground piping systems that we have are actually used when we must collect something that is, again, hazardous in nature that we have to treat specifically to remove the hazard levels of it or the toxicity of it or whatever. So in, in these cases, these are actually closed piping systems that happen to be routed underground. In many cases, it'll just simply look like a hole in the ground with pipes extending down into it. In these cases, we're actually going to send this commodity off uh, to an off-site facility or to a, an alternate facility that is actually going to treat these components and, and uh, make them less hazardous. Some other things that we have to deal with uh, in our plant systems are air. We have our utility air, and utility air is primarily used when we are running pneumatic tools. This particular drawing indicates that our foundation is going to be an octagon shape, and as you can see, it's going to be five feet four inches across the flats here as we look at it. Now what we're going to do is take half of that five foot four, which is two feet eight inches, and we can see that identified here on our drawing, and we're going to use that two feet eight inches as a radius to draw a circle that will identify the diameter of our foundation. So in order to do that, I'm going to take my compass, and on the three eight scale, I'm simply going to open my compass to the radius of two feet eight inches. And once we've done that, I'm now going to go to the drawing, lay my center point on the intersection, and I'm going to construct a light arc or circle to be used as a construction of our octagon. I can then use my 45 degree triangle and by drawing tangent lines across the circle, on the top, the bottom, the left and right sides, and then by using the 45 degree angle, I will be able to once again draw Now in situations where you have long runs of straight pipe, we have another situation that is going to occur. And in a situation like that, we must incorporate a pipe loop. Now a pipe loop is nothing more than just a U shape that is manufactured or fabricated into the long runs of pipe. Typically you're going to find these up in a pipe rack where you have continuously long runs of pipe and you have to account for the expansion of the pipe itself. In this case, we happen to have a pipe that is continuing or traveling in a horizontal direction here. And the expansion that we have to account for is going to be taken up in the pipe loop. And as you can see, the continuous line is simply a U shape. And as expansion occurs, the elbows will grow together, distorting the U shape and therefore accounting for the expansion. It's important that we do that because if we have one long continuous run of pipe here, we might force our pipe to grow into a piece of equipment or off a support or something like that. So it's very important that we understand expansion must be accounted for. Now a couple of other ways that we can actually control expansion is through the use of pipe guides or pipe anchors. These are items that we can actually attach to the pipe or attach to a support that will control the pipe. And one of the most common ones is a structural shape, the 